save us. I love that. Salvation. He came to bring salvation. I love that so much. And actually, salvation uh, throughout Scripture in the New Testament is the Greek word sozo. And it means not only spiritual salvation, but he came to redeem our bodies. It's spiritual, uh, our, our spirit, our soul, and our body. And I love that we're working through healing. Let me tell you, this has been such a um, a work a, a working process. God wants us to grow. We need to mature in our viewpoint of God. We need to grow in our viewpoint of healing and understand God's plan for us. And let me tell you, um, we I came back from India last week, and right at the end of the week, I, I'm, I'm preparing my messages, I'm talking about healing. And my throat started hurting. <laughs> I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm like, God, this is so funny. Working through the narrative of understanding what's happening and also struggling a little bit in my body. It's crazy because those are the very moments where you start to go through the message and start to go through the scripture and say, Lord, I'm going to say something. This is What I'm going to say is very immature, very immature. But that thought comes to your mind and says, is this true? Do you really heal? Oh, let me tell you, when that thought came, when that voice came, you know what maturity did? I'll tell you what maturity did. As soon as that thought came, I went back to the first message. Is it God's will for us to be healed? What is the answer? Yeah. Yes, it is God's will for us to be healed. So any delay in that is for a purpose. And we can trust the Lord in that. Amen. That is where we grow. This morning, we're continuing in this, this uh, 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 process of growth in healing. When God delays in healing or does not heal, it, heal us when we want to be healed, what is the purpose of that? Last week we saw that, uh, uh, remember what we talked about last week was a delay for greater good. This week, the title is To Know Him. To Know Him, okay? If you have your Bibles, turn with me to 2 Corinthians Chapter 1, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse, verses 8 through 10, okay? We saw this in the first message. We po pointed out all the verses that we're going to be preaching from. But 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 8 through 10. I love this scripture. It's very hard. For we do not want you to be unaware, brethren, of our affliction, which came to us in Asia, that we were burdened excessively beyond our strength. I, I want you to, we have to see that as we read that. Paul is saying that they were burdened excessively beyond our strength. Have you ever faced that? Where you don't have strength anymore? Your situation is so, so burdensome, so, so gripping over your life that you feel like you don't have strength anymore. You don't have the, the will to live. And actually, look at the rest of that verse. In verse 8, it says, We uh, uh, burden excessively beyond our strength so that we despaired even of life. Can you believe that, the, that Paul is saying that? He got to the place where he said, we, we, I don't think we could live like this anymore. Have you ever said that? I can't live like this anymore. I can't live under this burden. I can't live under this stress. But, but, but you can. Look what else he says. Indeed, we had the sentence of death within ourselves. The sentence of death. I, I, I can't imagine what he was going through, what they were going through. They, they all got burdened. They all got sick, really bad, whatever that was over their life. So that we would not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead. You could underline that piece. So that we would not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead. Who delivered us from so great a peril of death and will deliver us. He on whom we have set our hope and he will deliver us. Let's go down one more verse, 11. You also joining in helping us through your prayers so that thanks may be given by, the per by many persons on our behalf for the favor bestowed on us through the prayers of many. Lord, mature us today. Grow us so that we can have a clear understanding of you and we can trust you in our situation. In Jesus' name, amen. 
There is a quote here uh, by two uh, doctoral students, medical uh, uh, students, and they write this, maintaining an active lifestyle. This, this is not uh, spiritual. This is talking about physically. It says, maintaining an active lifestyle is critical to good health. <laughs> we know that, right? This is especially true for patients recovering from wounds or extended hospital stays. Robust activity can improve mental health, reduce the risk of infection, and it accelerates wound healing. That's cool. If you are active and you went through a trauma, if you are active, even your wounds will heal faster. I love that. Let me tell you, there's no principle in this world that first did not derive itself spiritually because God is the author of all things. If we are active in our spiritual walk, let me tell you, no matter the wounds that are in your life, they will heal. They will heal. God has a purpose for that. Let's start there. Sometimes the delay of our healing is so that we can actively know Christ. Sometimes the delay of our healing is so that we can actively know Christ. So that we can actively know Christ. So that we can actively know Christ. Sometimes, listen, we don't like that part. We want to be healed before. We want to be delivered before we get to the place. We want to be delivered and whole so that we can know Christ. But many times, there's a delay in our healing, a delay in our deliverance, so that we can have these moments of intimacy with Jesus. These moments of knowing Him like never before. I'll never forget, I was reading this book, um, I can't remember uh, the missionary's name, but he was a missionary, he was one of the first missionaries who brought the gospel to Papua New Guinea. And he was, uh, I love this portion in this book, he was talking about, he was reaching these these cannibalistic tribes, and finally they were tolerant with him as a missionary to a certain point, and then the word came out, these cannibal, this cannibal tribe was going to kill him, and they were going to eat him. So they started hunting him. And he had seen deliverance many times. Uh, uh, quite a few times they had uh, uh, rushed the house to destroy them, and there had been angels around the house, and the tribe got scared. God delivered them so many times. But on this one occasion, they came to the house, and God did not protect them. In fact, they scattered. They, uh, these missionaries ran into the jungle and were so afraid. They were running for their lives with this tribe hot in pursuit on their, uh, on their backs. This missionary said that he finally he was able to get a few hundred feet in front of this tribe chasing them, and he said he got to a tree, and he climbed into this big, uh, I believe it was a banyan tree, he climbed into this big banyan tree, and he nestled himself into a branch, and he said he started calling out to God, saying, God, deliver me. God, why didn't you do it? God, set me free. God, protect me. God, uh, meet me in this place. God, you've done it before. Why are you delaying? Why aren't you delivering us? And he said he got high into the tree, and he started praying and praying and praying. He said, then he could hear the tribe came. They came to the base of the tree and they stopped at the tree so that they could rest and figure out which way they could go so that they can attack this missionary. The tribe is at the base of the tree and he's at the top of the tree. He said he was waiting in that tree and he started calling out to God and said, God, no matter what you do, I want to know you. He was up in the tree. The tribe was at the base of the tree the entire night. No, they didn't know he was up there. The entire night. In the morning, the tribe left. And this missionary, writes in this, when he writes his memoir, he says, I would go through anything in the same manner so that I can have the experience that I had in the tree. He says, all throughout the night, he says, never in my life have I felt the closeness of Jesus than ever before. He said, because God didn't deliver me, but he stood with me. Well, God delivered him in the end, but God didn't deliver him the way he wanted, but stood with him. I, I think that's so much. This is what Paul is saying here. Sometimes the delay of our healing is so that we can actively know Christ. How? 
To know him, you can fill in the word again, actively. To know him actively. To know him actively. And that second point, to be active in knowing him. To know him actively, to have the active presence of Jesus in your life, but also to be active in knowing him. Right? To be active in knowing him. To be able to say, I'm actually going to press forward and do the things in my life so that I can know him. Do things in my life that I know will bring the presence of the Lord in my life. Now let's, let's start with number one here as we break apart the scripture. Number one, God will sometimes delay a healing so our trust in him will flourish. God will sometimes delay a healing so our trust in him will flourish. Chapter uh, verse 9a, indeed, we had the sentence of death within ourselves. God, why is God delaying? So that we would not trust in ourselves, but in God. See, let me tell you, how do we know that God delays sometimes healing in our life so that we grow in our trust? Because when God delays healing, what is the biggest issue that we struggle with? Is trust in God. Don't we? Don't we? When God delays something in our life, our biggest issue becomes, God, can I trust you? God, can I really trust you? Because you are not doing things, listen, the way we want them to be done. And that's the truth, right? We can say all these phrases we want. God wants good for us. God wants the best for us, which he does. God wants to heal us and deliver us, which he does. But a lot of times when it comes to healing, what we're really saying is, God, you must heal me the way I want you to heal me. And if you don't heal me the way I want you to heal me, then my issue becomes with you and I can't trust you as God. Let me tell you, if that is the struggle of our walk, we know then the truth is that we need to grow in our trust in God if the enemy of our soul is bombarding us with the question of, can you trust God? What is maturity? Maturity in healing, maturity in knowing God as healer, is to be able to say, God, whether I live, and this is the tricky part, whether I live or I die, the, the three Hebrew children said that, remember Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, God is able, more than able to deliver us from this fire. But if he doesn't, he is still God and we will not bow. That's maturity. That's maturity in healing. God will sometimes delay healing so our trust in him will flourish he says, so that we will not trust in ourselves. If we question this point, we clearly struggle with trusting God to sustain our life. That one, this is the point of maturity. Boy, that heat is loud, isn't it? Is that the heat? Whew. <laughs> yeah. So God will sometimes delay healing, so our trust in him will flourish. Our trust in him will flourish. I like that the, the apostles say this. It says that it says that so amazing. So that we would not trust in ourselves. Do you see that point? God allowed them to go to that place so that they would not trust in themselves. So that they would not trust in themselves. I like that. Let's go to number two. Paul came to realize that healing or deliverance was not required. Paul came to realize that healing or deliverance was not required for living life to the fullest. Ah, do you know that? You, be, you or me being healed in life is not, does not need to be in place for us to live life to the fullest. Don't we think that the opposite though? If we're not healed, if we're not set free immediately from what we're going through, then how could we live life to the fullest? No, 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 no. No matter what's in our life, we can live life to the fullest. Look what it says in verse 9b uh, when he says, so that we cannot trust in ourselves, but that we would trust, put our trust in God who raises the dead. In God who raises the dead. He came to realize that healing or deliverance was not required for living life to the fullest. But in God who raises the dead, living our life through Christ is all that we need, is all that is needed to live fully. 
living our life through Christ is all that is needed to live fully. Not deliverance, not healing. That's hard, isn't that? If we can, can grow in our, our, our walk with the Lord to be able to say, God, this issue in my life, I am not going to let it stand in my way of living life to the fullest, then we will break free. We'll break free from it. It may be that pressure, but we'll break free from it. But what does that issue tell you? What does the enemy use that issue in your life to tell you? You will never be full. You will never be happy. You will never have joy. You will never have the, the peace of God over your life until this is out of your life. That's the lie. That's a lie. God can do it all the way. There's two verses here. Let's turn to those ones. The sermon will turn to Philippians Chapter 1, verse 21. You know these. Once you hear them, start hearing them, you know them. Philippians 1, 21 and Galatians 2, verse 20. Who has Philippians 1, verse 21? For to me, to live is Christ and to die is pain. Paul says, for me to live is not healing. For me to live is not everything walking, turning out right. For me to live is Christ. That's it. For me to live is Christ. And I love that he puts the opposite side on that. He says he brings the worst possible thing. And to die, that's only gain. For me to live in this life is for Christ. For me to die, it's, that doesn't matter anyway. What a perspective. No matter what happens in our life, for us to live is Christ, to die is gain. Galatians 2.20. Who has that one? Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live. Oh, let me tell you, a lot of times the I wants to live, wants to live the way we want to live. But Paul says, I've been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. But Christ lives in me. I like that. That's really powerful. So sometimes it's for us to know God. Let's look at this. Turn, turn your page. Go to number three. The delay in our reception of healing should magnify in us, okay, the delay. Our delay in receiving healing should magnify something in our life. Our delay in our reception of healing should magnify in us the power of God to heal, the power of God to heal, and not our frustration of not being healed. That's what, what, a, what an opposite way to look at things. If we, are being, if we are delayed in receiving our healing, it should actually magnify in us the, 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 for better use of a word, the moxie, the attitude, the drive in us to say, God, you are healer, and not our frustration of not being healed. Which actually, what comes first? Usually our frustration of not being healed. How do we see that? Look what Paul says here. From verse 9, see, but God who raises the dead. Look, look at this piece here. God who, hold on a second. The beginning of, uh, let's go, let me start from verse 8, so you can, I want to set the context again in these verses. Verse 8, the last part of verse 8, we, um, we were burdened excessively beyond our strength, so that we despaired even of life. Verse 9. We had the sentence of death on us. The last part of verse 9 into verse 10, look at these two verses, says, But in God who raises the dead, verse 10, who delivered us from so great a peril of death, and will deliver us, on whom we have set our hope, and he will yet deliver us. When Paul was faced with delay, he focused on the power of God to deliver. Four times, actually, we just used the very end of verse 9, but four times in two verses, Paul magnifies the power of God to deliver or to rescue. Do you see that? Look at that. Last part of verse 9, God who raises the dead. Is that hope or is that desperation? Hope. Verse 10, who delivered us? He goes back to the, what God did in the past. What did God do in the past? He delivered us. From so great a peril of death. 
Do you know what that great peril of death is? Hell, yeah, God delivered us. He's saying, wait a minute. Paul says, we're going through something here, but I know that God raises the dead. So I'm going to look back, and first I'm going to go back to the cross, and I'm going to say, he already delivered us. From what? From the greatest problem ever. God delivered us, which gives us the hope, the premise for everything in the future. We are delivered people. Amen. Listen, even if the devil himself came and stood before us and the devil inflicted the worst disease on you and the devil destroyed your body and you died on the spot, we are victorious in Christ because what he does to the body, he cannot touch the soul. And God has redeemed us and given us eternal life. That's why Paul says, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain, okay? So he goes back to the cross and says, He delivered us from so great a peril. And He will deliver us. On whom we have set our hope. And then he says it again. And He will yet deliver us. When your life is bombarded with the delay of God, magnify the power of God in your life. My body is wasting. My body is hurting. My body is struggling. There is a delay. I'm trusting God to heal me. And there's a delay. God, you are healer. You did it at Calvary. And I'm holding on to it now. And you will do it tomorrow. And I hold on to that hope. That's right. They'll renew their strength. I like that he says that. We can only grow in our faith and trust in God if we accept that God is working in our life for his glory, for his glory and our greater good. <laughs> we can only grow in our faith and trust God if we accept that God is always working in our life for his glory and for our greater good. If we do not accept this fact, we run aimlessly and we strike blindly. That's an interesting phrase there. I, when I wrote that down, I, I was praying. I said, Lord, I was struggling on this paragraph. We can only grow in our faith and trust in God if we accept. Oh, that's a hard, let me tell you, I, that's a hard one to write and to work through and swallow. To accept that God is working all things out, well, first and foremost, for His glory. God will have glory in everything, right? Not, nothing in this life can ever happen without bringing glory to God. But for His glory, but also for my greater good. And I, I wrote this, uh, as I was writing this down, I, I just wrote, as quickly as I can, I wrote, if we do not accept this fact, we run aimlessly, we strike blindly. And then I stopped. I'm like, Lord, what do you mean? We, we run aimlessly. We strike blindly. And then the Lord led me to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. I want to read 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 through 27. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run? But only one receives the prize. Run in such a way that you may win. Everyone who competes in the games exercises self-control in all things. They then do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. Therefore, I run in such a way as not without aim. I box in such a way as not beating the air, but I discipline my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified. I discipline my body and make it my slave. You know what he's telling? He's saying there, I am maturing in my walk. I am not running anymore aimlessly, and a lot of us are running aimlessly. When we struggle and struggle and struggle with trusting God with the issue of healing, trusting God, God, when will you do it? God, you haven't done it. Let me tell you, that's aimless running. That's running back and forth. That's going, that's doing the whole circle thing where the enemy says, ha, you're in a race, just run around in circles. You're in a fight, don't even, don't even strike at the enemy. Just strike blindly, strike in the air. Uh -huh. 
Let me tell you, that's what we look like when we cannot trust God completely and say, God, I'm maturing in my faith to trust the plan that you have. We are running around in circles. We are boxing in the air without anybody in front of us. And Paul says, enough of that. He says, you realize you're in a race. You know that you're in a race. Therefore, you keep your mind on what you're supposed to win and you go forward. When we have delay in our healing, we go forward. When we have delay in what we want in our bodies, we look forward and say, Jesus, I am still coming to you. And I trust you, and I'm not doing this blindly. And let me tell you, as you do that, you start running ahead of the pack. As you grow in your maturity and you stop asking the questions of why, you stop asking the questions of, God, I can't trust you. I don't know if I can trust you in my life anymore. When you mature past that, you actually connect your fist with the enemy. You strike him. You strike him so hard and you start to make advances and you realize, I am growing in my faith. I am moving forward. Hmm. We must run in such a way, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 9, we must run in such a way as to win. <laughs> to not run aimlessly, to avoid hitting air, is to realize, uh -huh, is to realize that there is purpose in delay. There is purpose in delay. <sighs> Can I accept that? God, there is purpose in delay. Now, I, I put a, a disclaimer here because I know where our minds want to go. It is not that we are accepting the delay. We are not accepting the delay. We are accepting that God is working through the delay. Do you see the difference? I'm not saying, God, fine. Delay in my life so that I can know you. Delay in my life so that you can do something good. I receive the delay. I rebuke the delay. I don't want the delay in my life. I want the healing in my life. Is it God's will to heal me? Yes. Is God a healer? Yes. He delivered me at Calvary. He'll deliver me today. He will deliver me tomorrow. But if there is a delay, I will simply hold on and say, God, I will fight through this delay. I will cling to you as healer. But I know that you are working no matter what. That is growth, church. That is how we grow. That's how we mature. That's how we raise our faith and we're able to trust God no matter what. And let me tell you, the intimacy that comes into your life when you stop with the back and forth of your mind, the intimacy that comes, you're able to finally have clarity. You know why? Because you are running with a purpose. You're running to win. You are running to win. Thank you, God. You're running to win. Last one, number four. Our healing delay should connect us, should connect us more to the body of Christ. And this is just a little freebie point. I don't know if this point really fits into the whole message, but I saw it. I said, I'm putting that in there because this is really good. Look at verse 11, which is so unique. Back in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, this is so cool. Uh, Paul says all these things, God will do it, God will deliver us. He's delivered, he's done in the past, he'll do it again. Verse 11. You also joining in helping us through your prayers. Wait a minute. You also helping us in your prayers. That's so good. <laughs> there is always strength in numbers. You also joining in helping us through your prayers so that thanks may be given by many persons on our behalf for the favor bestowed on us through the prayers of many. <laughs> Solitude is the enemy's strategy of isolation so that we can be led astray and devoured. <laughs> Solitude is the enemy's strategy of isolation so that we can be led astray and devoured. Sometimes you're so bombarded by people who say, pray for me, pray for me, or remember to keep me in prayer. It becomes like the Christian cliche, but what power there really is. We pray for each other. To really be able to say, all right, this is, this is my issue. I'm looking forward. I am going forward. 
this is not the depressive side. Not the depressive where like, this is what's going on with me. You need to pray. No, no, this is the, God has a purpose for me. Maybe we should be able to actually stand up and speak that out of our mouth. God has a purpose for me, and he is healing me. And if there's a delay, it's for a purpose, and he wants me to know him. And you pray with me. Pray with me. Now, you know what's so incredible here? Look what Paul asked. <laughs> this is kind of cool. Paul asked the church to pray for them so that deliverance would come more quickly. Okay? That's obviously first. He says that in verse 11, the first part. By joining and helping us through your prayers. Okay? He wants to pray that it comes quickly. Yet, he also states that by many people giving thanks, favor in delay would be revealed. Look at that. So that thanks may be given by many persons on our behalf for the favor bestowed on us through the prayers of many. Favor bestowed on us. What favor? What kind of favor? Through the delay. Paul says in verse 9 and 10, there's such a tragic thing happening to them. And he tells the church, we're keeping our eyes on God because he wants us to know him more intimately. And we're going to know him more. And then he says to the church, pray for us so that we will be favored while we're going through this. Hallelujah. Remember a, a few weeks ago when we started this message on healing, what things does God want to favor us for? Why is there delay? Listen, let me tell you, sometimes there's delay because we lack faith. It's simple. Sometimes there's delay because of our offense towards God, okay? Sometimes there's delay because God is supernaturally connecting us to, to a situation that he wants us to be connected. Sometimes God will bring new relationships into our life, relationships that are deep, deeper developed. And then you find, wow, if I wasn't going through what I was going through, I wouldn't have these people in my life surrounding me in that certain way. Sometimes the delay is for greater good. God is actually working something out so his power can be magnified. Sometimes his delay is so that we could know him more. Don't get caught with the, with the enemy's fight. Oh, I can't trust God. Yes, you can. He's actually giving you an invitation saying, come closer to me. Come closer to me. What an opportunity. What an opportunity. Grow in your faith. And actually, I, I want to say this, church. I'm doing this myself week by week. By the end of these messages, these messages are lasting two months. Okay, next month we end it. Uh, this whole theology of healing. How do you grow in your faith? Listen. You, you, you work through the conviction that you receive in the message. If you're convicted, you work through it. Say, all right, Lord, I'm going to accept your truth. You accept it. You file it in your life. And you go to the next message with anticipation. By the end of the two months, you'll have a theology of healing. And you will have grown in your maturity. The devil will have his hands broken as he tries to stick them into the doors of our life. <laughs> Hallelujah. His little fingers will be broken. Because we will have matured. We shut the door on the enemy. Amen. Amen. Don't give him any opportunities. Don't give him those opportunities. I love that. That's, what a beautiful way. And, and you know why this is so powerful? Is because Paul was really struggling. Remember, he says that they despaired even unto death. Their, their situation was grave. Really grave. But he says, ah, in all of this, we want to know him. <laughs> He's giving us the ability to know him and to put our trust not in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead. In God who raises the dead. Wow, that's, that's taking the worst of the situation and still trusting God. Actually, Hebrews tells us of Abraham. When Abraham was going to offer Isaac, I, that's insane. I, I don't even like to think through that whole process of taking your son and saying, Mark, we're going to go into the woods, I'm going to kill you. No, I can't even imagine that. God tells him, sacrifice your son. And Abraham goes, sacrifice his only son. And people say, maybe he was going to do it, he wasn't going to do it. Yeah, he was. Hebrews says of Abraham, he brought Isaac to sacrificing, trusting in God who raises the dead. He's saying, God, I don't understand this, but I do but my hope all the way to what a, what a first hope in the resurrection, right? God, I'm putting my hope in you no matter what. And if you delay all the way, there's still a resurrection. Hallelujah. What a way to look at it. God, there's a delay. There may be a delay in my healing, and I'm going to trust you to heal me all the way through. 
And Lord, even if I should take my last breath, there is a resurrection. Hallelujah. Wow. That's maturity. I want to, I want to be there. I want to be there. I want to be able to be at that point. Because let me tell you, uh, if we can just, just for, give me 30 seconds to talk about death. I don't want to think about death. <laughs> I don't want to die. I love living. But let me tell you, as a mature believer, when we finally close our eyes here, you're not going to want to come back. Are you? <laughs> no. I love my family so much. I want to be with my, my wife. I want to be with my kids. But let me tell you, if, if I die and my eyes open up and I see Christ before me and my inheritance of eternity, you think I'm going to stand before Christ and say, send me back. Send me back. See you, suckers. I'm going. I received my resurrection. Oh, God, give us that faith. To trust him and say, oh Lord, I trust you so much that no matter the delay, it only brings me closer to eternity. Thank you, Lord. Don't waste our time. Don't waste time listening to the voice of the enemy. Don't waste time listening to the voice of the enemy. Can God heal you? Can you trust him? God doesn't love you. God won't do it in your life. God's not, he, actually, you can't even believe anything he says. Get out in Jesus' name. I'm growing in my faith. God is a healer. He's a deliverer. He's a resurrectionist. God can do it all day long. And I am trusting him, and I will hold on to him no matter what this body says. Amen. Ah, live it out. Okay. Let us pray for the re revelation of favor and delay. <laughs> oh, here it is. All right. You're struggling in your life. There's something that God is delaying in you. Let me tell you, there's something in my life that God is, I'm in delay mode. I rebuke delay mode. I don't want delay. But there's something in my life that's being delayed. And now I'm going to pray for favor in revelation during the delay, that God will do it. If that's you, you have something in your life, come on, lift your hands as well. Lord, I, I don't accept the situation I'm in. I don't accept, oh God, any sickness. I don't accept any mental anguish. I rebuke it, in fact, oh God. And Lord, as I trust you, Lord, I'm trusting you. And I also see, God, that while I'm holding on to you, there may be a delay. Jesus, I confess you are working something mighty, oh God. And I thank you, God, for my healing. I thank you for my deliverance. I thank you, Jesus, that you're desiring to bring revelation in my life. Revelation of what? that I am favored even though I'm walking through this. Thank you, Jesus. I am favored even though I'm walking through this. Lord, I pray for each person that's responding to you. God, I pray for their maturity. Lord, that you would mature us, not to fight, not to struggle and question, but to accept and grow. Give us the end prize, huh, Jesus, which is you. <laughs> You are our prize. Amen. Keep our eyes on you, the author and finisher of our faith. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Go before us, God, today. <sighs> Lord, as we take this message and we add it, Lord, to our growth repertoire. <laughs> Lord Jesus, thank you. Sometimes, Lord, there may be delay, but I get to know you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We commit ourselves to you in all ways. Oh, Lord. And Lord, with faith now, with faith, with the, that instant growth that you've just given us of maturity, we are able to receive this from you, that the Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord lift up his countenance over us and give us peace. We receive it. We receive it, O oh God. We receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>
Amen, amen, amen. Grow into maturity. Praise the Lord. Amen. Next week, Easter Sunday morning. Bring your eggs. They're going to hatch. No, Easter Sunday morning next week. God has a word for us, and he has something so mighty for us to do. Praise the Lord for that. Amen? amen. All right, God bless you today.